If you built a miter saw station, or if you're thinking about building one, you probably know about the offerings on the market right now for miter saw fences and stop block systems. If you're like me, you sort of found that there were some issues with what was offered. One, affordability. Uh, two, uh, lateral adjustment. And three, they required some form of fence material to attach the track for the stop block system to ride on. So I sought to find a solution for all the problems and issues that I was seeing with what was offered on the market. I wanted something that was affordable, durable, precise and accurate, had infinite adjustability, and was also compatible with the hardware that I had already for clamping and hold down. So let me go ahead and show you a close up of the system and explain to you how it works. First, I wanna apologize. In a previous video, my shop tour, I said that quarter 20 hex head bolts and M6 hex head bolts fit within this extrusion and lock against the profile walls. Uh, I was incorrect in that. Quarter 20 bolts and M6 bolts do fit within this channel, but they don't lock against the walls. I'll explain more of that later. The basic design is quite simple. Essentially, I'm attaching a T-Track style aluminum extrusion to my miter station top and having a tall aluminum extrusion fence ride within that track. The tall fence has the same T-Track profile as the tabletop profile, and this allows for multiple clamping elements and shop made stops. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the miter top extrusion. The profile that's dadoed into my miter saw top is the HFS PURE 6-12 and the three X's designate the length in millimeters that you want cut from Misumi Engineering. The, profiles measure, the profile measures 12 millimeters tall by 20 millimeters wide. The miter saw fence measures 30 millimeters wide and 60 millimeters tall. The profiles here have two channels along the fence and one channel along the top and the bottom. The fence also has two channels on the back as well. The designator for that for this particular part, this particular profile, is the HFS L6-3060 dash, and the three X's on the end designate the length that you want cut by Mizumi Engineering. This particular extrusion is called their lightweight standard type. There is a heavier gauge that you can get. I don't see the need to buy the heavier gauge extrusion. This stuff is very rigid, so I think this is gonna work just fine for uh, woodworking needs. This is the bracket that you'll need to attach the T-track on the miter saw top to the miter saw fence. Uh, essentially, it's just a bracket with two of these, what they call insertion nuts, and two of these M6 uh, by 12 millimeter uh, cap head screws. This bracket actually comes in a set with two of the nuts and two of the screws, and it's called HBLSS6-SET. Once you attach the T-Track to your miter saw station top, you'll then need to attach the bracket and the insertion nuts along with the screws, and then slide that into the T-Track. Just like so. And what I actually did was I bought a couple of these extra insertion nuts along with the M6 by 12 millimeter uh, cap head screws. And I use those as stops because I already calibrated my fence for um, alignment with my miter saw. And so all I do is I just butt up against, butt the bracket up against those uh, insertion nuts and screws. And then I go ahead and tighten down the fence. And it's that simple. So if I have to remove the fence and take it out uh, and put it back, it's a really simple operation. You'll probably want to make a shop made flip stop or stop lock. And if that's the case, you'll probably need one of these uh, M6 insertion screws. And essentially it's just the same profile as the nut 
but in this case it has a screw post that measures uh, M6 by 22 millimeters. And all you're going to do is just slip that screw through a hole that you create on the stop block. And then I bought a bunch of these M6 female threaded knobs from Amazon for like, I think like 20 of them for, uh, for nine bucks. Uh, they came from China, so it did take about two weeks to get here, but uh, I have a bunch of them now. And that just threads onto there. And as you tighten up, that draws the screw post in. To attach the stop block, I simply take the insertion screw, slide it onto the top extrusion, top profile of the fence, and tighten down the stop block. <clears throat> The measuring tape on the fence is a Sterrett sticky measuring tape. And what I'll do, what I did what, to calibrate the measuring tape was, uh, say I put, uh, put the stop lock arbitrarily at 13 inches, I'll get a piece of wood that I know is 13 inches, lower down my uh, miter saw, and then place that uh, 13 inch piece between the miter saw and the stop lock, and then push the fence uh, over to that piece. All right, let's talk some real numbers. How much would this fence system with the aluminum extrusions cut to the length that I have right here cost you if you were to get it from Masumi Engineering? It would cost you $60.85 pre-shipped. Now I say pre-shipped because depending on where you are in the US or if it's being shipped internationally, those shipping charges may, may vary. For me, here in Huntsville, Alabama, it cost me $17 to get it shipped to me. So uh, all said and done for the aluminum and the hardware, 17 bucks. Now I didn't include the uh, M6 female threaded knobs, and I also didn't include the uh, Sterrett uh, measuring tape. Uh, you can find out how much those are on Amazon and make an assessment based on those numbers. All right, so let's talk about compatibility. In my shop tour video, I said that quarter 20 and M6 hex bolts fit within this, uh, these tracks. And, and that's true, they do fit within these tracks, but they don't lock within the walls. And I made a mistake, I shouldn't have said that they fit into the tracks. They do fit into the tracks, it's just you can't use it as a clamping or locking mechanism. So, you know, you can always buy these uh, these profiled screws and nuts from Misumi Engineering. But more importantly, uh, the, uh, the extrusions are compatible with a myriad of clamping elements. For instance, uh, the Festool clamps fit in there perfectly fine. Uh, Rockler uses a 5 sixteenths, uh, 5 sixteenths uh, T-bolts. And those, those work really well in here. They can be locked down, no problem. Now, Incra uses quarter 20 bolts. And I just said that quarter 20 bolts do not lock into these T-tracks. But what you can actually do is you can buy, I guess, what's called a closet bolt or toilet bowl bolt, a quarter 20 toilet bowl belt. And that actually fits within the extrusion, no problem, and locks down. Then you also have these, uh, I don't know what these are called, but they're made by Rockler, and um, they're, they're pretty neat. You, you can lo lock them down, and let's say you've got a bench dog or something, or you're using it on your uh, miter, miter saw, uh, and you have a small piece that needs to be clamped up against the fence, you can, you can actually push this clamp up against it, and then lock it down. So. So, you know, there's a lot of compatibility with uh, clamping elements, and these are basically all the clamping elements that I use. So, uh, for me, uh, it's extremely compatible, and it works, uh, works well for my needs. Well, I hope you found this video to be informative. I'm going to leave links to Misumi Engineering so you can check out all this stuff on your own. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. If you've got questions or comments, leave them below. And please, subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Thanks. Have a great day.